Try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to an end. I am still with you. Here ends the first reading. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how come some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if that is true, that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have all died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all, we are, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ was raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Here ends the reading. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. So that where I am, you will be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The, um, the Apostle Peter says, Always be prepared to give a defense for the hope that is within you. Confirmation students from 1967 to 1986 are invited to come and give a defense for the hope that is within you by singing. I have pieces for you. Come on, be brave. You know? You never know when pastor is going to give you the last confirmation test. <laughs> you guys can or can't. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you're more than welcome to. That's right. That's right. I missed this choir by one year.
for uh, folks that aren't from the community, and I think it's true in other congregations too, but these folks had that hymn memorized on the day of their confirmation. They had it memorized. And I knew they could today too. But that one verse is a little tricky, so I thought. Um, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and accepted unto you, O Lord. Well, I am honored, honored to be able to uh, lead this worship service on behalf of Pastor McCaskey. As I said, he didn't confirm me. Close, but didn't quite. Um, but being here during my high school, college, and whatnot, um, and then all through the years, I really see him, saw him as a mentor about what it means to be a parish pastor, right? A pastor that loves his people. And so I'm very honored to be here for that. And I remember at some gathering of pastors, whatever, he had said once, I like to go to funerals because one reason I, I like to hear someone else preach. Pastors don't get to hear other people preach very often, right? I can't speak for him. I know that all my sermons are perfect because I have nothing to compare it with, <laughs> right? The second thing is he said, I need to hear the gospel too, right? Need to hear it. And over time, I've learned the same thing, really. And I pray that today the gospel will be heard. And not surprisingly, not surprisingly, he said, preach on Psalm 139. There's plenty of there to do. And he said, be kind to me. And I said, Pastor, we are all sinners in need of God's grace. There's no reason for us to pick against each other. And so from the Psalm 139, the one verse I, I kind of focused on, you hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I cannot attain it. You know, um, life has best and worst, highest, lowest, everything in between. Some days it works just smooth as can be. Some days about, you know, 8.30 in the morning, you say, I'm going to go back to bed because it's just not working. And in all of that, right, life as blessing and joy, life as challenge, challenge and sorrow, how do we sort that all out? How do we put into some kind of perspective what life is about. Because it's confusing sometimes. Clear as a bell other times. How do we do that? Well, we turn to God's word. Why? Because God created us. God created the universe. God explained to us what life is really like under his guidance and what life is like outside of his guidance. And so when we are at our best or our worst, when we are at our happiest or at our lowest, when we are confused or things seem clear, we go back to God's word. Because that's where it all begins, in him speaking out, let there be, and there was. We go back to his word because he said, I knew you before you were even born. In the womb, I knew you. And so we want to hear what God says. We turn to Psalm 139. We, in that Psalm 139, how much we know God knows our intricate parts. Puts us together piece by piece. You know, it's, the, the miracle is that people are born well. When there gets to be some... Uh, uh, birth difficulty, birth defect of one kind or another, that's not really the surprise. The surprise is that it turns out well because so many things have to work just exactly the right time. Right? Different chemicals coming together, different growth taking place. So many things have to work just right. Well, 
It's not a surprise. It's not an accident because God creates us, and so we give thanks to God for that. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Scientists have figured a lot of things out. That's a good thing. I'm glad. When health gets to be an issue, they have ways to help us out. I'm glad. But we do know that the medical world only postpones the inevitable. Right? It just postpones it. We're glad. You know, everyone wants to live a full life and everyone says, I'm ready to die at any time. Um, just not yet, right? <laughs> not yet. But in all of that, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. The difficulty of life, the difficulty of preaching, right? Pa God called Pastor McCaskey to the office of holy ministry. The, uh, the verse says, you hem me in and behind before and lay your hand upon me. God laid his hand upon Wilbur McCaskey and for 61 years, 61 years of ordained ministry, right? And while he may have retired a few years ago, <laughs> he was still pastor, right? And a title that we gave him lovingly. Lovingly. It's hard for me as a, as a colleague to think of him with his first name because, well, he's this pastor. That's a, a lovely thing. So we give thanks to God for 61 years of ordained ministry. Day in and day out. Right? I should have calculated how many days that was, but it's a lot. Right? Day in and day out to be called to care for the people of God, to hear what God says and then to proclaim what God says to a particular congregation, preaching the very same message really for 61 years. We are sinful. God is gracious. We live under his guidance. Three-point sermon for 61 years, right? Sometimes folks think, well, can't you preach about anything else? No. St. Paul says, what? We preach Christ crucified, only Christ. I came among you and knew nothing except Jesus. And so if a pastor preaches something other than Christ, it's not really a sermon. So again and again and again. Uh, Dr. Bruce Thielman was a um, noted preacher. He wrote... There is no special honor of being called to the preaching ministry. There is only special pain. The pulpit calls those anointed to it as the sea calls its sailors. And like the sea, it batters and bruises and does not rest. To preach, to really preach, is to die naked a little at a time and to know that each time you do it, you must do it again. Bruce Steelman. To preach, to really preach, is to lay it out there because pastor or parishioner, we're in the same spot. We are sinful people in need of God's grace and seek to live under his guidance. Right? But how do you find the words? How do you figure out what to say? Well, you could get out the same sermon over and over and over, right? Now, there's a story about the pastor comes to town and preaches a sermon. Everybody says, good sermon, pastor. Next Sunday, preaches the same sermon. And everyone says, good, pa good sermon, pastor. Comes the next Sunday, preaches the same sermon. Pastor, isn't there anything else? He says, well... When you start doing what I said the first time, we'll go to number two. <laughs> Hard to find the right words to say because pastor and parishioner are sinners in need of forgiveness. Pastor and parishioner are, have questions that need the same insight. Pastor or parishioner 
The same weakness that needs strength. Pastor or parishioner, right? the same sorrow that needs comfort. Pastor or parishioner, it doesn't matter. We need the same gospel. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. And so turning to God's word, we know that God loves you so, so much. Because God knows your life. He knows death. He promises strength. He gives hope. He knows today. And he promises tomorrow. God loves you so much that his words are our only hope. And so God speaks directly to you. He speaks directly to us. In, uh, for the first 18 centuries, I found this out not long ago, of the first 18 centuries of the church's life, the second most popular book to preach from was Song of Solomon. The Psalms were the most used. Song of Solomon was the next for 18 centuries. Why? Because the church saw that as a story, a love story, between Christ and the church. Christ, the bridegroom, the church, the bride. And so that love song was a song about Christ and us. These are the words that I would like to have, the last words I want God to say to me from Song of Solomon. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away with me. Are there better words to hear from God for our last breath? God knows our situation and calls us to that. May the next words that pastor hears be this. Along with the hosts of heaven, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Words that he takes us and words that he receives us. The next words would be, good morning, time to get up now. We're going to dinner. May God bless us with his word, a word too high that we cannot attain it, but a word that he gives freely for our hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us stand. Let us pray. O God, the Father in heaven, O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, O God, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, O God, our Heavenly Father, who has taught us by thy holy apostle not to sorrow over much for them that sleep in Jesus, mercifully grant that after this life we with all thy saints may be received into everlasting joy. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful after they are delivered from the burden of the flesh, are in joy and felicity. We give thee hearty thanks for thy grace bestowed upon thy servants, who have finished their course in faith, do now rest from their labors, and we beseech thee that we, with all who have departed in the true faith of thy holy name, may have our perfect consummation and bliss both in body and soul, in thy eternal glory. O God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us deeply sensible of the shortness and uncertainty of human life, and let thy Holy Spirit lead us through this present world in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life, that when we have served thee in our day, and generation, we may be gathered to our fathers, having the testimony of a good conscience, in communion with thy church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a holy hope, in favor with thee, our God, and in perfect charity with all mankind. Almighty, everlasting God, who by reason of sin causes mankind to die and return to the dust, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Grant us a true faith in thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who was delivered for our offenses, was raised again for our justification, and reigns to all eternity. Help us by thy grace that we may die daily unto sin and live according to thy holy will, so that when our last hour shall come, we may be prepared for a peaceful departure. Receive our souls into thyself and grant that at the last day our bodies may rise again from the grave unto eternal life. God of all grace, who didst send thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. Most humbly and heartily we give thee thanks, that by his death he hath destroyed the power of death, and by his glorious resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Grant us assuredly to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from thy love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Wilbur McCaskey. Wilbur Herbert McCaskey, son of Albert McCaskey and Hilda McCaskey Nee Hen, was born in Toluca, Illinois on September the 5th, 1933. He was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit at St. John Lutheran Church in Toluca. He confessed his baptismal faith and the rite of confirmation at St. John under the training of the Reverend W.C. Volkman and was admitted to the altar to receive the medicine of immortality, Christ's life-giving body and blood. Wilbur was joined together in holy matrimony to Carolyn Shear on September the 7th, 1957, in Green, Iowa. They were blessed with 55 years of married life together. God also blessed them with the gift of four children. Wilbur was ordained into the Office of Holy Ministry by the Reverend A.J. Lechner on June the 12th, 1960, at St. John he served St. Timothy Lutheran Church in Castleton for six years, St. John Lutheran Church Schwer of Milford for 20 years, and Trinity Lutheran Church Shumway for four years. He served as chaplain at Prairie View Lutheran Home in Danforth. Considering all the commitment to Prairie View, it just seems appropriate that he ended his baptismal journey there on October the 3rd, 2021, Wilbur, at the age of 88 years and 28 days, fell asleep in Jesus. He is survived by two daughters, Kristen, Adam, Leanne, Tim, and son, Tim, four grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. He's also survived by one sister-in-law, Susan. He is predeceased by his wife, Carolyn, son, John, and four brothers. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our brother Wilbur Herbert McCaskey. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.